Hey, this is Angie of Little Dumplings Nursery, and today I'm going to be demonstrating uh, how to put together a baby. We have been working on a tutorial baby that's a little uh, Simply Baby, um, and I used him to paint for a little Simply Baby tutorial for an upcoming class I'm going to be doing for beginners, um, Reborn Doll Painting with Air Dry Paints. So, um, this is the little uh, Sadie kit from Bountiful Baby, and so she is ready to be put together, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about that today. Um, what I've already done is I have already um, rooted the lashes in the baby. They've been sealed. I've actually gone and put a magnet up inside the mouth. You can see that or not, but the magnet, I glued it with A6000 glue. And then I take a piece of dough suede and glue that over the back of it so that's secure. And that's been drying. Um, the lashes, I also, after I root them, I glue those inside with these 6,000 glue. So the head is ready to go. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing, I'm going to get move over, is that we will be uh, talking about sealing the limbs and weighting the limbs. So I've got three of the limbs done, and I'll show you how to do the last limb. But... Um, because I'm doing this baby for a um, baby that would be like a Simply Baby line, which would be like the babies I use for comfort therapy babies, and I use them for the tweens um, when the parents are looking for a, a reborn doll that's um, more affordably priced because they know it's going to get played with. These are the, the what I call my Simply Baby line, and these are the babies that they're still very nicely modeled and they're still but they're lightly weighted so they're not as heavy um, because we find that the elderly people if you're using it for comfort therapy can't can't comfortably hold a baby more than four pounds in the three three and a half pound range for at the most is is the best for them and then for kids just because they're going to play with them and drag them everywhere and that kind of thing i don't recommend going any heavier either um, so this baby i've already sealed this leg as you can see what i do with these is i usually fill them up um, somewhere between the ankle and the knee, depending on the size of the limb. I don't fill the, the limb all the way to the top, so it's it's weighted and it'll it'll fill nicely, but it's not so heavy that it's that it's going to be make the baby too heavy. And then I fill it the rest of the way with polyfill. And then some people like to use the little end caps you can order from Bountiful Baby in different sizes to fit in there. But I find after I've stuffed it, I just like to take a piece of dough suede and cut a circle and glue it on with these 6,000 glue. So that's how I did um, the limbs on this baby. Um, to show you what I'm going to be filling the baby with, I use the what I call glass micro beads. Um, and what this is, is Balatini glass. You, want, you don't want crushed glass, you want the Balatini glass because it is actually round, tiny particles of glass. I got this one off of eBay from... <coughs> Excuse me, from Abrasive Armory. Bountiful Baby also sells it. Uh, Zorro.com sells it. Walmart sells it on Walmart.com, but they actually order it through Zorro, so it's the same you would get there. Um, another place you can get it is um, Granger. I've gotten it there before as well. And you want the the extra course. Um, this, I can show you a little bit of it. It's about like sand, I guess you would say. I don't know if you can see that. But. So I used this little measuring cup, actually. This, this is like a little medicinal measuring cup that you get with cough syrups and whatnot. This is what I used to measure so that I could get each arm and each leg weighted the same. I put one of these in each arm. Now in a larger arm, that might go just past the wrist, but because this baby has skinnier arms, um, it actually wound up filling it up to about the elbow. So we're going, you know, with looking by amounts, how much it weighs. And then on the leg that I filled, I put two cups, two of these little cups in it, and that brought it up to about right below the knee. So I'm gonna show you that now. So what I did to fill it, if I just take my, my limb that needs to be filled, and I have a funnel. Let me move some of this stuff. Hopefully you guys can see this better. So I just put the funnel down on my limb. 
tip my cup, scoop it up the glass. I'm gonna hold it over here and that's one cup I'm pouring it in. Well, not an actual cup, but one of these little medicine cups. And two. And that's all I'm gonna put in this limb because like I said, I don't want it to be too heavy. Make sure everything fell down in there. I'm gonna close up my bag. Set that aside. Then I kind of just jiggle it and squeeze the feet to make sure that everything's gotten down in there. Then and, and I don't know if you can see in this limb or not, but the glass is just at the knee. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my polyfill. This is the original polyfill brand. I, I get this at Walmart. You can get different brands, different grades. I like this, it works well for my purposes. You just stuff it down in there. And then you're gonna take a um, chopstick, which they come in the, in the package, but I also, anytime I go to a Chinese restaurant, I always bring home a few extra chopsticks and just pack it down in there. You want the polyfill to be packed. I like to pack mine pretty snug. I don't want it to be hard as a rock, but I don't want it to be so squishy that you can, can feel the um, the glass jiggling around in there. I like for my glass to pretty well stay down where I put it. So I'm just packing that down in there. There we go. So, I'm just kind of squeeze my baby and see how it feels. All right, that feels pretty good. Okay. So, I've already cut my disc out of um, dose weight. So, what I'm going to do is take my E6000 glue, which I've almost used this tube up, but and I'm just gonna run it right around the rim. I just glue right around the rim, like so. Be careful not to get this glue on the baby because if you do, when you pull it, it'll pull paint. And then just glue my felt disc, whoops, dropped it. Glue my felt disc over that. I've got a fan over here in the corner. It blew it out of my hand. All right, so there, that's ready to go. I'm gonna lay this aside, let it dry a few minutes. A couple of things I wanted to show you. Um, this body is a bountiful baby body. Um, just because I'm trying to keep the cost down for this class, I just went with these little manufactured bodies. A lot of times I'll make my own bodies or I'll get custom made bodies. Sometimes I use bountiful baby bodies. And this is the one that you can get pretty cheap. It comes with strings in it. These strings are fine for while you're making your baby and you want to tie it up and put your baby together and look at it and kind of decide, does my coloring look good? Am I happy with this or whatever? Um, they're not, in my opinion, sturdy enough, especially if this is going to a child, to keep the limbs in, securely in place. String does break down over time. It can break. It's just not suitable. So I pull these out and I re-load um, them with zip ties and I get the extra small head zip ties that are made specifically for um, reborn dolls. You can buy the uh, cheaper zip ties like you get at the hardware store, but I haven't found any with a small enough head to use on these. The heads are usually on, on the long, like 12 to 14 inch ones, the heads are pretty large. I have found Sometimes at the dollar store, you'll find um, the zip ties that have a little smaller square head and they're okay, but they're not, they're only go up to like the seven or eight inches. They don't go up to the big size. And I'm still not so sure that those are as sturdy as these because these have the little metal um, thing inside that makes it lock, the little metal lock, that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna strain this in, just Bear with me as I do this, try to do this as quickly as I can. Nope, not want it more go in. The only thing about the casings on these with the strings and the bodies from Bountiful Baby 
is that the casings are a little bit on the tight side. So you may have to do like I'm doing right now and get a pair of tweezers and kind of open it up a little bit. Going to the other side. There we go. And we'll just thread that through. When you get to where the um, the body is sewn with where the seam was folded over, it can be a little tricky getting that through as well. So you just kind of have to fiddle with it. Got that one through. There's one. Oh, I should have re redone these before the video, but I was um, trying to think of what you guys would want to see and whatnot. The music you hear playing in the background is, is uh, I've got my um, computer set on Pandora, and it is playing uh, big band music. I love big band music. Something about big band music is just soothing to me, and um, I play it while I'm in here in my, in my um, work office play it while I'm painting and I highly recommend that when you're painting or working on your dolls that if you like music find a music that um, makes you relax so that you can enjoy the process because sometimes it can get kind of stressful when things are not going the way you want them to um, this art form is just like anything else there are things along the way that may happen whether you have a paint that's not turning out the color you want it to or um, your zip ties aren't going in easily or um, you know just different little things that can happen then you don't want to be stressed out because when you're stressed out you won't be doing your best work so I just I, I think that having music in the background that I enjoy um, helps me to relax um, some people like to listen to books on tape and do that while they're working I've heard other people say that they turn on a TV and play a movie and <clears throat> watch the movie or a TV series while they're working. So whatever um, gets your creative juices going is a good thing. All right, we're on the last one here. Sorry about this. So now you see, you kind of get what you pay for, I guess. With these cheaper bodies to save some money but you do need to string up the cable ties in them which can be a little bit time consuming and you do have the added cost of the cable ties but in the end i feel i still think if you're going to buy these bodies it's worth the savings i'm always one looking for a way to save money especially if it's a doll like this that i'm trying to do as a um, budget baby for for the my more economically priced ones. So the next thing I'm going to do, I've already stuffed my baby's body with some polyfill, and I may need to adjust that, but I just kind of fill it out some, and I may add or take away as I go. The next thing I'm going to do is I have filled up a couple of gloves here, and I'll decide which one I'm going to use. I won't use both in this baby, but I take these gloves that are by, they're all vinyl gloves. I get these at the beauty supply uh, store. These are by Salon Care. And you'll see it's all vinyl so they don't break down like the rubber gloves do you don't have to worry about people having a latex allergy i also use these when i'm painting um so they're great gloves and you can get a box of 100 for like 10 dollars, i think it is so i fill up um my glove with the glass and decide which one i want to use i'm normally i think i'm gonna try the biggest one in this baby i think it'll fit fine so the other thing i do is i go to the dollar store and i buy these trouser hose now these are not uh, a lot of people use um, pantyhose, and you could, but the trouser hose are thicker. They're like tights, so they're thicker. And then I take my glove filled with glass and put it down in the trouser hose. And what that does is it is it um, makes it a little softer. And then I tie it where it has some movement, but not you know just a little bit. But that makes that glove just feel a little bit softer. 
and then cut off the excess. Cut the top. So let's cut that right off. And you can decide if you want to put the big end at the top of your baby's chest, if you want it to be heavier at the chest, or if you want it to be heavier at the butt. Generally speaking, I usually put the big end at the top um, because you have more weight at the bottom with the baby's legs being heavier than the arms. And so it's good to have a little weight in the chest. So take the body cavity, um, the polyfill, and, and squish it around and make yourself a cavity in the middle of the polyfill so that you can insert that um, glove so that it's completely surrounded by polyfill. So that's why I said I started out with some polyfill in this body, but I may adjust it. And now that I've gotten it down in there, then I can decide if I need to put a little extra, which I think I do on one side here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in. I'll look at, I like my babies to be squishy but not I'm not one that likes the real floppy ones and I'll tell you why I know a lot of people like that but I don't because I've seen babies especially if I, these budget babies that I know are going to go to kids or to the elderly I've seen them down the road a little later on and that polyfill does pack down with handling and then they get extremely floppy so then I can hold the zip ties up and get an idea about how it's going to look and see that baby still plenty squishy it's not it's not hard, rock hard, tight. The other thing is these bountiful baby bodies are um, pretty full, fluffy little bodies. So you gotta be careful not to overfill them or your baby comes out looking like a, a barrel chested baby. Okay, so I've got that in there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is attach my legs. I put polyfill in each of the legs and I've determined these leg caps, they look to be pretty close to about the same amount of polyfill. You don't want to overfill them, but you don't want those floppy either. When you're putting your legs together, especially on, on a three-quarter leg body, look at the seam on top on the top of your body. That's the top of your baby's thigh. When I insert that leg, I always line that seam up with the top of the knee. I have seen so many people that put it in like this so that the seam is lined up with the inside of the leg and then the baby lays down and it's all splay legged and I don't like that. So I line my seam up with the top of the knee. And then I pull my cable tie. And then hold the baby up and look at it. And my cable tie is not completely cinched totally tight, but it's tight enough that I can, I can get a, a good look at it without the baby falling. So that if I needed to twist this and adjust the leg any, I can. We'll go ahead and do the other leg the same way. That one doesn't feel like as quiet as my polyfill is. I'm gonna put just a little bit in there. And then I've got to close my cable tie for this one. Don't forget to insert the end of your cable tie into the head of the cable tie. I didn't do that. So let me do that right quick. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Me working on the fly sometimes it's like you don't think things through until you're in the middle of it all right let's try that so and then I hold it up to see how the baby's legs look and are the knees back when I hold the baby up are the knees facing up or are they splaying out and so if I feel like it needs to turn in a little more I can take and twist it a little bit this one's pretty good so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cinch them down to the tightness to hold it in place. And I've got some um, little wire clippers. Pick these up. Uh, I think I got them at Walmart. You can get them at Hobby Lobby and places like that. They're little floral wire clippers. They're good for getting up in there and clipping your cable tie close to the head so that you don't have that piece sticking out that scratches you. If you do wind up with a little scratchy piece, take a fingernail file and um, file it down smooth. Now, sometimes you can go back with a pair of tweezers and pull the casing over the heads of the cable ties so that they're completely covered. 
and I will eventually go back and do that, but I will tell you that on these little vinyl baby bodies, because they have such skinny little cable ties, it takes a little bit of work to get it pulled over them. Sometimes I can't get it all the way over. Um, and it's not the end of the world if you don't, but it's nicer if you can. So with the arm, I'm going to insert the arm. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the leg. Check how I feel here. So I want to make sure my arms are filled well with polyfill, but not overfilled, especially on this baby because she's got skinny arms, so I don't want that top part of the arm to look too puffy. You can kind of take and pull your cable tie, not cinch it, but just pull it and see how it's going to look. Boy, I can put the head of that one on. See, like I can just take and hold it and pull it. It's about how I want by. Maybe a tad more of that one. So I'm going to put the arm in the cable tie. I mean the arm in the um, the arm uh, piece. And notice that there is a seam at the top of the arm um, piece that this is connecting to. So that top seam should run even with the with the top inside of the um, elbow or the bend of the arm. So when you've got that lined up, you can go ahead and cinch that down enough to where you can then adjust the baby and look at it. So, let me come over here where you can see me. So now I've got it lined up pretty good with the inside of the arm, but see how when my baby sits, the arm tends to want to twist out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist the inside of the arm in towards the body so that when she sits, her arms rest nicely on her legs. And then you can still lay her back and lay her arms back and she'll still display fine. But when she's sitting up, her arms won't be all flayed out. So that one looks the way I want it to look. I'm going to cinch it and snip it off. I'm going to do the same thing with the other arm. Make sure when you loosely cinch it that you kind of pull everything so that the gathers are pretty well even. So now we're going to sit here and look at this arm. And I want that arm to twist more towards the body as well. So I'm going to take this and turn it. There, that's good. And then we can cinch it down. Turn that one in a little bit too much. Let me turn it back some. There we go. Okay. So now you can see when we set our baby up, she looks nice. Well, she's headless, <laughs> but she'll sit nicely. So there's the body. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to set that aside, is we're going to um, focus on the head. So the first thing I want to tell you is that when you weight the head, um, you're not, you want to make sure where the, if you've ever seen people display these babies and they just flip back and they'll be sitting up and the head will be nose to the sky or they'll lay them down and the head just goes back like that. It's because they put all the weighting in the back of the head or the top of the head and that's not the way you want to weight your baby. You want your baby so that when it sits up, its chin kind of tilts down a little bit because the weight of the head is going to be enough to make it want to pull backwards anyway. So you want that when you're hold, like when you hold it, yes, it's going to pull backwards from the weight and, and feel right in your arms. But when you set it up, you want its chin to tilt down a little bit. So you want to put your weighting in the front area of the mouth and chin. So I um, weight these on the heads. I don't weight them heavily either. What I did was I took my glove and I filled up three fingers on the glove with the glass and then I tied it off and then I squished it out so that it actually 
goes out into the glove a little more and I've got some flexibility to work with and I've tied off the end. This I'm not going to put into a hosiery because it's going to be in a vinyl head. Nobody's going to be fiddling it so it'll be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put polyfill in my baby's head. And I'm going to pat the baby's head about two thirds of the way with polyfill. And I'm going to take my um, skewer and I'm going to kind of push it all down towards the back of the head so that I'm feeling from the ear back, back here, and the top, I'm wanting full of polyfill. Now, different people have different ways of doing this. Some people stick their glove down in the head and fill it with glass and um, tie it off. And, and I, I've tried that method, but I just, I feel like I have more control over things this way, so that's what I do. So now I've got it pretty good with polyfill, but you can see I can pull it down and I still have an opening in the front there where the I can stick my fingers in and there's nothing in the chin and cheeks area of the baby. So now I'm going to hold that polyfill down. I'm going to start working this weight for the um, head into the baby's chin and cheek area. And this is where you kind of just got to take my word for it. I take my fingers and I manipulate it until I feel until the fingers are running sideways inside the mouth like this. The fingers of the glove. And then just kind of push it forward. So now you can barely see a little bit of that glove right there where it's up in the chin. I don't know if you can see that or not. Up in the chin area. Piece of it fell out. I'm going to stick it back up under the right in the chin. So once I get that in there, then I'm going to push my polyfill down over it and pack more poly, polyfill behind it. So I'm going to pack it behind it to hold that in place. I'm taking my skewer and just running that in the back. You want to pack your head firmly, especially if you've painted hair and sealed it with some kind of thick sealer so that the hair does, the sealer stays nice and taut and it's not being pushed in or caved in to cause cracking. But you don't want to pack it so much that it starts bugging the eyes out and the face stretches and it loses form. I've seen kits that were packed so tight that when you saw the finished baby, it didn't even look like the same kit because they packed it so tight. So you want it to be snug firm, but you don't want it to be just super tight. And you can kind of tell as you pipe this in here. Um, what I do is kind of squeeze the cheeks and I can tell how empty or full it is. And these heads will hold more than you think sometimes. I mean, you can put a lot more in it than you think, so that's why you have to kind of balance that out. We're getting close now on this one. Now it's, I can feel it's snug. So that's as much as I want to put in that baby's head. And I can also feel that it's wanting to tip forward because that's where my weight is. So I've got mine like I want it now. Now to close this off, some people once again use those plugs, especially with Bountiful Baby Kits, and you can do that. Um, some people just leave it and don't put anything over it. Same with the arms and legs. I don't personally prefer that, especially with the loose glass and the arms and legs. I'm always concerned about somehow something happening and it getting out. So what I do is I cut a disc and I don't use the dose weight for this. I actually use a thick piece of cardboard um, or semi-thick um, and I glue that in place. And the reason I like the cardboard, it, it won't break down, but the other reason I like the cardboard is because when you put the cardboard on there, it's going to be sitting on top of the polyfill in the neck the cardboard does not drag on the neck and it makes the head turn better. Whereas on um, using cloth, it has a tendency to drag if you wear glue felt or something over that. So I'm gonna take my E6000 glue and glue it around the edge, just like I did the legs. my 
my little paper disc on here. So that's on there. And I'm going to just set my head here for a few minutes and let the weight of the head kind of set the glue in place. Normally I would leave that sitting longer than I will today because normally I wouldn't be trying to move forward for the tutorial sake. But um, I'm going to give it just a few minutes and um, let that sit there. And while I do that, I will go ahead. I've got a, um, a onesie here that I had tried on the baby earlier and a little uh, headband. So here's my onesie and here's my little headband. I'll lay that over here and I'll get a diaper for the baby. I'll be right back. So since it's summertime, I'm going to use this little, um, I forget what you call this flower, but anyway, it's a little Hawaiian flower pansies. I don't know. Uh, this is an honest diapers diaper. Um, some people love these and love the prints. Some people are concerned about the diapers going sticky inside the um, elastic. I have found, I've not had any problems with these, but I have found that um, when I put them on my babies, I tend to, if it's touching vinyl, I'll take and fold the inside of the diaper in so that the elastic's not touching the vinyl. But um, if you are concerned about using honest diapers on full vinyl limb babies, then just use something else. But they are great for the three quarter leg babies because the diaper the elastic is going to be sitting on the um, cloth portion of this body. So it's not going to be touching the vinyl, so there's not going to be any problem. And I've had honest diapers on my three quarter limb babies in my own crib for long periods of time, gone back and checked them out, not had any issues. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and put the diaper on the baby. Actually, um, I do sign my baby's bodies when I'm done. On the back, I will sign um, Angie's little dumplings, and I will date it the date that I finish the baby. Um, and I, then I'll let that dry and put the diaper on, but I'll sign this baby later. Go ahead and put a little diaper on her. This diaper is uh, size one. I do find the honest diapers run small, so their size one is more of a newborn, and their newborn is, is more of a preemie. Now that I've got the diaper on the baby, you can see that there's nothing touching vinyl. It's all up in the creases there on the cloth. So we're good. And I'm gonna go ahead and put her head on. in here and kind of pull it up and look at it and see if it's going to be if it's going to need a little more stuffing or not I think I've got this one just about right so I'm going to leave it and I'm not going to put any more in it and then cinch that down you want it tight enough to secure the head but not so tight that the baby's head can't turn and guess what I got that one too tight so, if you do like me and get it too tight, you can just cut the cable tie and take it out and do it again. Um, I will do that now, I guess. If you if you have to remove the cable tie, cut it on the on the side away from the head, so that then you've got a shorter cable tie that you can reuse somewhere else, like in an arm. So see, even I make mistakes in my when I get in a hurry. I'll tell you what, I'll do that later. So anyhow, normally you would be able to turn her head, but you can see that her little head tips forward just fine. She doesn't flip backwards on me. She looks great. Um, I'm going to go ahead while she's still got her diaper on and weigh her in case you all are wondering how much this baby weighs. Should have weighed her without the diaper, but it's not going to affect her weight that much.
So filling this baby the way I did, I've got a digital scale. She weighs three pounds, 8.3 ounces. So she's a perfect size for um, an elderly person or for a child, older child. Little ones, the owner, so you can see her all dressed. Um, this baby is very heavily modeled um, and more heavily painted than I normally would recommend or would normally do. I mean, some people like that look uh, because I was doing her for a tutorial and taking pictures with a flash camera. I purposely had to overpaint her a little bit just so that the coloring would show up for the pictures. So, this baby is a good baby for somebody who likes a baby with a lot of um, color. The three-quarter legs do show in the onesies, but if you pull the onesies down over the legs a little bit, it's not bad. Oh, there she is. I'm going to give her a headband. Make her a little girly. This could be a boy or a girl. And here is our finished little baby. And see how her hands are cuddled nicely. They um, snuggle forward. Her legs, her knees are in the right position. Her head is um, wobbly. but it, And if I could turn it, I'll change that on the cable tie later. But it would move well. And then, see, you can still see that her head will tilt back and it needs support. And then when you want to hold her. She snuggles right in, and the way her limbs have been put on her body, she's um, just perfect for cuddling. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I appreciate you watching, and I hope until next time you have a lot of fun making